So today I wanted to share with you a vintage item that I have been searching for for years and I saw one last year but it was priced at a ridiculous amount like $200 on eBay because they're pretty rare and if you come across one especially in great condition it's like gold okay this is the classic beauty book and it is actually featured in here it is on this page and you'll see it here in the corner. So this is a Max Factor student makeup kit for men in the year 1920. And usually you can tell that by this black little compact, that usually indicates that it was from the 20s. So let me just talk about the 1920s face in cinema. So the eyebrows are black with a downward slope. Uh, plucked thin and filled in with a black grease pencil. Castor or vegetable oil is applied for shine. Eyes are dusted with dark shadows in green or lamp black. Lips are shaped like a red cupid's bow and drawn with a rounded shape on top. Thick waxy red coloring is applied with fingertips, avoiding the corners of the mouth. The color is available in a pot, as a liquid, or in a metal case, predominantly in orange, red, or dark rose. Cream and ivory tinted powder and rice powder is applied on top of vanishing cream. Rose and raspberry rouge in cream or powder paper is applied as a blended circle on each cheek. Rouge is applied before powder on the lower apples of cheeks in cream paste. Powder is applied on top to soften the look. Powder rouge is applied after a first coat of powder, followed by a second coat. Black grease stick eyeliner and wax beads are used on eyelashes. Facial cream is applied under powder to create a foundation. So that's how they did foundation in the 20s for film. Mascara is created from a cake of lamp black powder. So presenting, it comes in a sleeve. And here it is. Oh my God. So they have a men's box and a women's box. And it'll tell you on the side here. So this one does say female. So it says Max Factor Hollywood stage makeup kit. So if, if I'm correct, they would use this kit for students of makeup to learn how to apply makeup for the cinema and so they can go and work and do celebrity makeup so when you open it um it smells really old this is the cover on the inside and it says makeup chart for max factor students kit note with this special students kit every useful shade can be obtained by the proper mixing and blending of various colors to obtain certain complexion tones, for instance, lining color or under rouge can be blended into the grease paint for ground color. Again, with this kit, you can obtain an Indian makeup by using five and a half grease paint and blending your under rouge number three into it until the desired tone is achieved. Because the use of makeup is an art that varies with the skill of the user, the numbers and colors in this chart are given merely as suggestions. Um, so each item has a number to it and it's showing here, it'll tell you what it is and then the number for it, it'll tell you for male, female, elderly women, elderly men, straight makeup and elderly types or Chinese, Spanish, Hindu types. So they spelled Hindu D-O-O. -O. So I was trying to see if there was a date on here. And on the box, there really isn't, but I did find this booklet. I'm not sure if this goes in here. This booklet is 1958. If this came with the kit, it's safe to say that it was made in the 1958 era. And so you can kind of date this to the late 50s. But if it's not, if it doesn't go with the kit, then it's really hard to see maybe by the packaging because at the bottom of these items there isn't anything really 
And what's interesting is here, I have a signature for Emma Lou, and I can't read the last name, but that's pretty neat that somebody had it. So it looks like going in this book that it's really about color theory, and it has these cool cellophane type. I don't think this is for makeup, actually. I think this is for set lighting. So let's let's read one, actually. Brigham Gelatin Company from Vermont. Maybe this did come in the kit just so you could um, know what lighting is like and maybe what kind of makeup to do. Oh, that smells so, so strong. Upon request, a copy of this booklet will be sent free of charge to any interested school or college instructor. Yeah, so I have no idea why this is in there, if it does belong in there, but this says 1958 and it's, it's about like set lighting. So that's pretty interesting. I didn't pay attention before, but here is the kit. So oh, I don't want to drop anything, but it looks pretty darn close to the photo that I showed you oh, it's falling but remember how I said that black compact was an indicator of the 1920s well here we do have a white one so maybe that can help with telling when this was made or when it was bought so I do notice these and they're used this is kind of what we use in art they're just like rolled papers. Oh, don't look at my cut. It's rolled paper and this one is obviously used. This is kind of for smudging. And then there is a pretty used liner pencil. Maybe it came in a small size, but Max Factor Brown, Hollywood, California. It doesn't have a date either. So... And then there's this little piece of foil. I do not want to open it because it will just ruin whatever's in here. It's super delicate, so to not damage it, don't open it. But knowing about makeup in those days, I'm assuming that's like a black, like what the book was saying about like a black waxy melts. So they either use that for liner or even to put on their eyebrows like waxy type material. And then we do have five greased inks and just by touching the tops a little it is really pretty oily and this is the color 2a it says directions do not use cold cream base apply sparingly spreading as far as possible for further directions see makeup booklet number one so there is supposed to be a booklet but i don't think it's that lighting one Maybe it was missing. I'll have to find it online. But it's Max Factor's Supreme Grease Paint. Max Factor Makeup Studio. Hollywood, California. Made in the U.S. And then we have a number seven. Four and a half, which this one looks pretty used. So I'm guessing this is more of a flesh tone. There's a five. And finally an eight. I'm telling you, these things are pretty full. And then, I don't want to open these, but... Oh, actually, this slid off carefully. This is number 16 lining, special size, Max Factor and Company, Hollywood, California, made in the USA. So, the lining, this kind of smells like crayons. You know how when you melt crayons? And then we have a number one, Moist Rouge. So, this one... It's kind of hard to open that one, so I'm not going to. This one is the cream blush that they use. This one is also a lining color, and it is like a burnt orange, kind of red, brown. And we have a number 12 lining, which is a white. You can see these things are pretty much intact, and that's awesome. And then I do have another one. I'm not sure what was in this because the, um, oh, here it is. It kind of looks like a waxy kind of 
Here's a cleansing cream. It's a special size, one and a half ounces, Max Factor and Company, Hollywood, California, made in the US. Nothing on the bottom. And this is pretty much used. That's pretty awesome. So I'm thinking this is kind of what the book was talking about, where they put um, kind of like a primer for the face. And then we do have the Dry Rouge, and this is just another classy name for blush. Like, why can't we say rouge anymore? It's blush. And that's beautiful. It says Evening Number 18. So that's the color. And this one, it's kind of made out of um, paper. The others were tins. But look at this, guys. Ah, I don't want to mess it up. So that one is the powder puff. I want to drop it. And here we have the rouge. It's pretty intact. And then we have a pretty full face powder. Number 7R special size. So 7R. Here it is. And this is going to make a mess. So be careful. There's the powder puff. And... And this also might have toxic materials, so be careful. I don't want to drop anything. It's kind of like a pinky color. That's cool. Put that back. Oh my god, don't breathe. So back in the day, a lot of powders had toxic things in it. Not sure what the date is or what the FDA regulations were in this time because I'm not sure what it was, but it's better safe than sorry. And that is my vintage Max Factor student kit. I hope you enjoy experiencing a complete set of Max Factor. And if you have any questions or you're interested in the techniques of back in the day, let me know. I love talking about that stuff. And some techniques that we use today is actually from back in the day. So they're old Hollywood tricks. 